We're turning attention now to flashback, a recap of stories that made headlines during the week. We begin from Monday in the nation's capital, Abuja, where President Mohamed Buhari inaugurated the Tidubu Shatima Women Presidential Campaign Council. The charge was simple, galvanize support for all Progressives Congress in the 2023 general election. And at the event, Nigeria's First Lady Aisha Mohammed asked the leadership of the party to sign a pact with Nigerian women that will spell out the good policies of the party towards women. They have come from across the 36 states of the Federation, including the Federal Capital Territory. They are here to rally behind their presidential standard bearer, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, and his running mate, Kashim Shetima. The national gender policy has formulated the 35% affirmative action since 2006. It demands that 35% of women be involved in all governance process. This has, however, never been fully actualized in Nigeria. The Nigeria's first lady and the grand patron of the Tinubu Shetima presidential women team, Aisha Buhari, and the chairman of the team, Senator Oluremi Tinubu, have been fighting for the cause of women and have been at the forefront of the 35% affirmative action. Now, with the Tinubu Shetima ticket, this gender equality policy is expected to get more attention. Permit me to voice out our concern for the progressive decline in the involvement and participation of women in elective and appointive positions at all the three tiers of government. Let us tell our women that the Tinubu Shetima ticket is the best option for them because the track records of both men show that they are gender sensitive and committed to uplifting the Nigerian woman. For the city boy, the long-awaited Nigeria's dream has come. The new hope is here. Hope of a better economy, constant electricity, and impregnable security of lives and property, among others. The women gathered here today. Let me say one thing. Hope is here. Hope is here. Assurance is here. Promise is here. Prosperity is here. Health is here. Security is here. Representing President Mohamed Buhari, the Chief of Staff to the President, Brahim Gambari, who inaugurated the team, says, no doubt that level playing field will be provided for the women. Tinumbu Shetima ticket is a project these women will follow through. He said, it's a victory they have already won. Also on Monday, the People's Democratic Party flagged up its presidential campaign in Uyo, a Kwaibom state. While addressing supporters and other party leaders at the event, Delta State Governor Ifan Yokoa said the presidential candidate of the PDP, Atikwa Abubakar, has the ability to address the myriad of challenges currently affecting the country if voted into office. The Nest of Champions Stadium in Uyo is the venue for the presidential campaign flag off of the opposition People's Democratic Party ahead of the 2023 general election. Leaders of the party are here in Akwaibom State to woo Nigerians to vote for the PDP with a promise to turn around the fortunes of the nation. Today, we have inaugurated, flagged off our campaign to rescue Nigeria, to rescue Nigeria from hunger, to rescue Nigeria from poverty and also to bring back the unity that we require in this country. The PDP is the only party in today's Nigeria that is indeed ready to take over power. And so today, what a flag of the hope for Nigerians. What a flag of the rescue mission to Nigerians. 
What the flag of the restoration move to Nigerians. The Delta State Governor, who is also the vice presidential candidate, wants Nigerians to vote for Atiku Abubakar because he possesses the right qualities to salvage the country at this trying time. We know that Atiku Abubakar is a general, a general well tested and somebody we know. We cannot afford to allow lieutenants lead because they will lead us to doom. PDP have ruled this country before. And when they ruled this country, they did very well. APC came with their lies. And today, the country has failed. You can see that insecurity, economy has collapsed. And we need to rescue this country. But we're saying the leadership of the administration, of the economy, of Nigeria as president has failed us. They are not only weak, they are ignorant. The next stop for the PDP campaign is Yobe State as they continue to turn Nigerians to trust them again with their votes come February next year. On Tuesday in Abuja, President Buhari conferred national honors on 449 individuals. The president attended the 2022 National Honors Award in Vestita alongside the Vice President Emir Simbajo. Some of the nominees at the ceremony were former Chief of Staff to President Buhari, uh, late Abba Kiari, Minister of Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashala, Director General of the World Trade Organization, Ngozi Okonjo Uwela, amongst others. National honor for deserving Nigerians, the first to be conferred in the life of President Muhammad Buhari's administration and perhaps the last for his administration. 450 recipients in different categories were subjected to a thorough screening process out of more than 5,000 applications. The President of the Senate, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, former Chief Justice of Nigeria, the Director General of the World Trade Organization, the Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations and the former President of the United Nations General Assembly were conferred with the Grand Commander of the Order of the Niger, GCON. President Mohamed Buhari says his administration will continue to partner with Nigerians and friends of Nigeria in efforts of nation building. The national honors are not merely decorative. They remind us of an important part of our responsibility as students. We must always endeavor to do our best for our country. We will continue to root out all forms of banditry, criminality, terrorism, and insurgency in the land. For the recipients whose contributions to national development have not gone unnoticed, this will encourage them to do more for their fatherland. Even without the award, the throne that I occupy already um, commands, um, it comes with its own expectations in terms of helping and elevating your people. And now that the federal government has somewhat put its stamp upon that in its own way, really doubles the, uh, the expectation. Uh, it, it's gratifying to know that uh, after serving the country for 35 years, you know, the country is honoring me at this time. I, I feel fulfilled. And on Wednesday, Justice Luka Odearewola took the judicial oath of office as he was sworn in as the new Chief Justice of Nigeria. He was sworn in by President Buhari in a brief ceremony at the Council Chambers in Abuja. The swearing in came barely three months after he was appointed in acting capacity. His appointment as acting CJN followed the resignation of the outgoing Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Tanko Mohammed, on health grounds. Justice Ariwala was appointed a Justice of the Supreme Court on 22nd of November 2011 under the administration of former President Goodluck Jonathan. acting capacity, I shall not let down Nigerians because with the support of my brother justices, like I can see all of them are here with me as they were when I was sworn in in acting capacity with their support, we shall not fail Nigerians. We are computerizing already the Supreme Court and all other courts of records so that uh, 
the delay in filing cases will become a thing of the past. Still on Wednesday, the presidential candidate of the APC, Ashua Jibola Tinubu, and his running mate, Kashim Shatima, concluded a meeting with the party's National Working Committee and the Presidential Campaign Council. One of the reasons for the meeting was to review the party's manifesto. Spokesman of the Presidential Campaign Council, Festos Kiyamo, said the manifesto is more than 90% ready and will be unveiled soon. Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu arrives Transcorp Hilton in Abuja with his running mate to attend a crucial meeting to deliberate and adopt the party's manifesto. <laughs> the meeting comprises members of the APC National Working Committee, Presidential Campaign Council and virtually all the progressive governors. The closed-door meeting lasted for a few hours, after which spokesman of the Presidential Campaign Council, Festus Keamu, told the media that the manifesto would soon be made public as the deliberations were geared towards strengthening the party's campaign document. What we did today was to review the draft of our manifesto. Our candidate is not a candidate that operates on his own. He, try, he tries to carry everybody along. And so he presented the draft to all the stakeholders today, the manifesto. We looked at it, and guess what? Almost all the stakeholders gave that draft more than 90% pass mark. He said the party is united and will soon hit the ground running for its campaign. Our campaign is like maneuvering a 50-ton trailer into the highway. And once we hit the highway, we hit the highway. So that is what we are doing. We, the president is the chairman of the campaign council. We are going to take his diary into consideration in picking and choosing the dates. Uh, but we are all virtually, you know, virtually agreed that we are going to hit the streets very soon. We are in sync with all of the segments of the party. The NWC, uh, as you can see, the governors were here, the PCC. We are on the same page. And just as the spokesperson has said, we are about to launch. So any moment from now, you will be hearing the fullness of our program. The party reacted to allegations that APC is mounting pressure on INEC not to use bimodal voter accreditation system, BIVAS, for the 2023 election. That is absolute nonsense. It's what you call poppycock. And these are the words of a drowning party spoken by a drowning man with a drowning candidate. There is nothing like that. We are above board. We are serious about what we are trying to do. We are going to achieve our objectives. We are going to win this election fair and square. And they are the ones that have lost five governors. They are the ones that can't get their party leaders to come to their rallies or to their presidential inaugurations. We don't have that challenge. We are working slowly but surely as one together. Everybody is coming together and I am very proud to be part of this. This meeting with major stakeholders of the party attest to the unity in the ruling All Progressives Congress, and this is expected to enhance victory at the polls next year. Same Thursday, the Court of Appeals struck out the seven-count charge preferred against the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Inam Dekanu, on grounds that the lower court lacks jurisdiction to entertain the matter. The appellate court held that Mr. Kanu, having been extradited from Kenya, without following the extradition rules, was a flagrant disobedience of the rules and a clear violation of his rights. This is because there was no denial by the respondents in the appeal to the submissions of counsel to Mr. Kanu, Michael Zekume, that his client, the appellant, was extraordinarily renditioned from Kenya. The court also held that the lower court failed to examine the findings of the prosecution as they could not have tried Kanu if he was not being illegally brought to the country. The court therefore held that the lower court has no jurisdiction to entertain the seven-count charge alleged to have been committed by Mr. Kanu before his extraordinary rendition from Kenya. Then on Friday, news came in that the Academic Staff Union of University has suspended its eight-month-old strike and ordered lecturers to return to classrooms. The university lecturer suspended the strike after an emergency meeting of its National Executive Council that started on Thursday night and lasted into the early hours of Friday. A statement by the President of ASU, Imanol Osodeke, noted that the issues raised by the union 
has not been satisfactorily addressed. He made reference to appeals by President Buhari and deliberations with Speaker of the House of Representatives and other patriotic Nigerians who waded into the matter. The ASU president, however, directed all members to resume all services earlier with one with immediate effect. <laughs>